this is one of the reasons I want to talk to you is I was listening to your podcast and you have the the thing that I think is so important, which is you really are curious. You really do want to talk to these people and uh, your your kind of mission statement, I think, is let's find common ground. Let's find stuff that we can talk about. Um, and I mean, I've heard you talk to, you know, uh, on your podcast, like Lena Dunham, like a celebrity, but I've also heard you talk to people who've done time in prison, people who've been through some stuff that, you know, uh, maybe a lot of people don't would never encounter someone like this. And you're talking to them and you're really listening and you're really trying to connect. And to me, that's what makes it work. That's what makes it really cool. Thanks, man. I mean, look, I, I'm 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 so deeply grateful for the people that come on, and and the fact of the matter is, is the vast majority of the folks that I have come on have never done anything like this before, and I know I'm asking a lot. And almost every single person that I've had on, I have a very very deep, uh, uh, a close relationship with, and we have real history with each other. So I understand that I'm asking them to do something that they're not entirely comfortable with, but I do genuinely believe in each person in their story. I think I've just been so, it, it, the sort of kernel of it just came out of being deeply, deeply frustrated with just the state of, of discourse in this country. I mm -hmm. felt that um, everything is agenda driven. So many of the, the, the major issues that we talk about are sort of being led and discussed by people who have no real experience in that issue. And, yep, yep. Uh, you know, a big part of it was coming out of COVID. You know, my cousin, uh, Adam Schlesinger from the band of, uh, uh, from the band Fountains of Wayne, he, he passed really early in COVID, mm -hmm. uh, way too young, left two daughters behind. Um, and it really kind of, it hit our family very, very quickly and, and, and right off the bat. So we were very serious of sort of, Staying, staying isolated up in Ojai, and 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 we really weren't leaving for any reason. And then, um, you know, when George Floyd came around, uh, you, you know, when that uprising started, I really wanted to be a part of it. And 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 I saw what happened uh, to Mr. Floyd, as we all did, and um, I was disgusted. I was horrified. And look, I'm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm someone who's, who's been beat up by the police before. Uh, you know, I, I'm someone who, um, has a little bit of experience with that. And, um, I remember exactly where I was when I saw the Rodney King tape. I remember exactly where I was where, when I heard that verdict. And these were sort of key moments in my life. Um, so I was out there and I wanted to be out there. Um, but at the same time, I turn on CNN and I turn on Fox News and I would see these protests and I would see people throwing bottles at police officers and people in riot gear. And each person under that mask to me is also a, a father, a mother, a brother and sister. I have really, really good friends in law enforcement, close lifelong friends. So every time I go out, I'd also go by a district or a police station and show my, my, my support there. And it just seemed like there was this vacuum where I couldn't be for both things, where I couldn't, where you had to pick a, a side. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and for me, folks who really walk the walk, they don't just talk about it, they have deep respect and even reverence for folks that are on the quote unquote other side because they're rubbing elbows with them, they're working with them every day. My friends who are police officers down in Newton have deep, deep respect for the community. My friends who are in the community down in South Central, down in the Pueblos, they see things that police officers do every day that they have deep respect for. Of course, there's times where they're completely on the other side and there's a lot of anger and there's a lot of hostility. but. These people are actually in the middle of it. And my whole idea was let's bring folks on that walk the walk. Don't just talk about it. And let's yeah. hear their stories. And let's see that they care about what their kids are doing. They care about their families. They want what's best for this country, too. And what I find is all this agenda-driven, we're on one side or the other, that's really, that's really a discussion for people. Who, who don't, who have the luxury of sort of staying in the safe sidelines. But the right. folks that are there in the middle, they've got way bigger fish to fry. And again, they're constantly looking for these points of connection. And, um, it's been, um, it's been a fascinating ride. We have, you know, teachers and surgeons and, uh, police officers and, uh, inmates and, uh, special forces soldiers and nurses and, uh, firefighters and, um, but again, each one of them are people that are deeply, deeply respected from the community that they're in. I think their story, it, 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 their stories are fascinating. And, 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 and most of all, um, you know, we're really connected. They're people I really, really know. And so the sort of leap of faith I'm asking you to take is that when I say this person is a, you know, quote unquote real one, you got to trust me on it. Well, that's the thing is I've noticed when I listen to it that, uh, that and, and this is what I found compelling, sometimes you'd be talking to somebody 
and I could tell they had never they they weren't familiar with microphone. I mean, meaning they, <clears throat> you know, most everybody I talk to um, knows how to speak into a microphone. Not that it's a hard thing to know, but there's a shyness almost that comes when you're talking to you know, uh, a firefighter or a nurse or, or someone who's, you know, just come out of prison, their approach to it is not like a, like a broadcaster or a performer or someone who's been on a, a press junket. They're approaching the microphone sometimes in a little bit of a different way and sure. they're quieter. And I find that that pulls me in yeah. because I know that what I'm, you're capturing uh, an authentic person here and you're not trying to get them to be something they're not. Um, and, and, is, and their motive is not, you know, their they're motive not is selling, not, they're, not they're not selling, selling anything. anything. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's a, it's, a, it's a very trepidatious, and very, I mean, a lot of these folks, I mean, I, I, my one friend who's a smoke jumper, you know, a career forest firefighter, you know, we've been talking for weeks about coming on. And look, he's a guy who, you know, when the forest fires come, I, I, up in Ohio, you know, I've, I've fleed from the forest fires. Uh, yeah. Fled. What is it? Fleed? Fled? Anyway. Fled. Well, Just get your get the <laughs> fuck out of there. <laughs> <laughs> we can all agree that that's the correct terminology. But that's what you do. That's what one does. But he goes right into it. And, yeah, and, yeah. and, and was really part of the reason that kept our town safe from the Thomas fire. But he's very, very trepidatious and worried about coming on. He has something that he wants to say. He wants to talk about the PTSD that's run rampant in firefighters and that sure. there's really not been, you know, we talk about it in soldiers, we're starting to talk about it a lot in law enforcement, but not for these guys and what they see every single day and that they're sent right back out to the field. And so he, he's got something he wants to share, but uh, yeah, there's no... There's no, uh, there's not a lot of practice. There's not a lot. There's there's nothing slick about it. And um, look, it's part of the reason why, um, you know, we, we we also make it doubly hard because there's cameras too. And right. and I think that that's part of the experience. You know, really seeing these people open up, seeing what's really important to them. And uh, again, I just have so much respect and reverence and and and, and genuine love for the for the people that I come that that, that come on. The other thing is um, when you're talking to people like that. The fact that they're not always eager is a sign to me of also authenticity. For sure. Because there are so many people in our culture that are like, come on, it's my, I, I want my camera time or I want my podcast time because I've got a story to tell. And that's fine. But there are so many people out there who um, are incredibly courageous people with amazing stories to tell. And almost their reticence uh, to me makes them... Uh, more valuable, more special somehow because they're not promoting themselves. Couldn't agree you know? with you more. They're Couldn't not, agree with you more. Um, you know, um, I've tried many times to go on the real ones and they've said I've done <laughs> no. nothing brave. No, you That's haven't. Actually. I have. No, John has said you've done, you've exhibited no bravery and not you're true. not an authentic person. Come on, yeah. Cohen. And, Come on, man. Uh, right. And I said, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm, right. I think I've... You're brave in your, your self-promotion. You know, yes, your, thank you. Your shamelessness. Yes, yes you thank you. See, and you know what, John? That's John. That's a form. I think that's what you're missing. You know, you look at me and you see a guy who, yes, flees long before the fire even broke out. Yeah, <laughs> and probably started the fire. I'm, yeah, maybe started it, and also I'm just constantly fleeing in case there is danger. Oh, and you're looking at a guy and you're thinking like, yeah, he's not. But I think in my shameless self promotion, I am a hero. Yeah, well, I didn't say oh, hero. hero. I said, oh, I'm a I, courageous. You know what? I'm no so, one said oh, hero. Oh, I no. thought. No. I I heard hero. No, no one said that. You know that. what? I think it's the microphone. Eduardo, check the microphones because I <laughs> sometimes I hear fine. hero I when someone's saying coward. <laughs> Stop that. We would love to have you on, man. You would love it. <laughs>